Welcome back everybody to another episode of Direct Comparison. In today's episode, we're going to take an early look at the upcoming open world shooter title by Ubisoft Montreal, Far Cry 6, and see how it compares in regards to its visual presentation and its gameplay to the previous mainline entry to the series, Far Cry 5. For reference, both games are being played on a PC, outputting at a native 4K resolution, with all the graphic settings cranked up to the highest values. However, I will be disabling the motion blur options to enable cleaner image capture. Additionally, while I will demonstrate Far Cry 6's various ray tracing options, most of the general gameplay footage will have this feature disabled for the sake of maintaining a more consistent performance level. So, let's kick this comparison off by first talking about the changes made to the presentation, starting with the quality of the character models. Now, character models in most Ubisoft games have never really been all that particularly impressive. There's just something about them that feels so remarkably out of place in what are often some beautiful looking game worlds. Far Cry 5's character models in particular have an almost cartoony feel to them, with some decent high-res texture work for surfaces like skin and clothing, but otherwise very generic shader work. Far Cry 6 does aim to improve in this area though. All of the characters, from the lead protagonist, their friends, and their foes, and all the various randomized NPCs look fairly decent in-game, with some great high-res textures that stand out much more prominently thanks to the improved lighting and shaders applied. There's still a few areas that could use improvement, of course, as it's sitting deep in that uncanny valley at the moment, but it's an improvement nonetheless. Next, let's check out a few of the shared weapon models. Here we can see some pretty interesting changes. The first and most obvious change is the location of the weapon on the screen. In Far Cry 5, Ubisoft Montreal tried to move the weapons a bit off screen to help maximize the player's view, making larger two-handed rifles like the AK sit towards the bottom of the image. In Far Cry 6, this change has been reverted back to how it was in the old games, with the weapons being more centered and offset to the right. This change allows for more details on the weapon model to be visible, on this AK, for example, you can see more of the receiver, and even the gap under the player's left arm. Additionally, Far Cry 6 has also removed that simulated depth of field effect for when weapons are appearing close to the camera, so you can also make out details at the edge of the screen that would have otherwise been blurred out. As for the weapon itself, it's difficult to really say that one looks better than the other here. They're very clearly the exact same weapon model but with improved texture quality and a slight bump to the geometric complexity in some areas. You'll also find that the simulated reflective surface of the metal finish for weapons like the hunting rifle in the 1911 isn't as reflective in Far Cry 6. At least, not when the weapon is dry. All the weapons, however, are plenty reflective during the randomized rainy weather or after going for a swim. So this seems to be more of a conscious design decision as opposed to an unintentional removed effect. Then of course, there's the muzzle flash effect that this series seems to have regularly gone back and forth on. In Far Cry 6, the muzzle flash is back to being bright and vibrant, ditching authenticity for the sake of delivering something more Hollywood-esque. Personally, I feel this is the right call, as Far Cry has always walked this fine line between deep immersion and just over-the-top action movie insanity. And I feel the effects go nicely with the improved lighting and shader designs. Next up, let's talk about the environmental design. Here's where we see the scales tip strongly in favor of the new Far Cry 6. This game's Yara setting is absolutely gorgeous, and is no doubt the absolute best looking location in the Far Cry series to date. And what's more, it's easily the biggest location in the series as well, with a ton of variety and more than enough detail to make each area feel fresh and unique. Yara is a fictional location based strongly around modern day Cuba, as such, there's beautiful tropical beaches, wide-reaching valleys, towering mountains, sprawling swampland, and densely vegetated jungles. But then there's also sprawling urban environments, a first for the series if you discount the smaller towns in Far Cry 2. Far Cry 5, on the other hand, takes place in a fictional interpretation of North America, in a region called Hope County. Here, there's large farmlands, thick forested areas, winding rivers, and a mountainous region to the north. For a setting that certainly didn't sound like it could be exciting, Far Cry 5's game world actually does a pretty decent job of mixing things up. But at the same time, I think, personally, the jungles have always been Far Cry's bread and butter, 
and Far Cry 6 really does a fantastic job of utilizing this theme to its full potential, delivering some of the most realistic jungles I've seen since Ghost Recon Wildlands or even the original Crisis. As far as the actual level of quality and detail in these locations go, there's no question that Far Cry 6 is leaps and bounds ahead of Far Cry 5. The amount of vegetation in every frame of this game is stunning, and the fact that they reintroduced the dynamicism of tree leaves, especially in how they react to planes and helicopter propellers, is a very nice touch. You can even destroy some of the larger trees now using explosives and vehicles, similar to how the destruction worked in the older Battlefield games. Whereas most of the taller trees in Far Cry 5 are basically stone monoliths that will stop any vehicle dead in their tracks. Upon even closer inspection, the texture quality is also pretty solid in Far Cry 6, though it is kind of difficult to improve over the fantastic work that was done with Far Cry 5's textures to begin with, as they still hold up really well today. Next, let's talk briefly about the lighting design. This is another area where Far Cry 6 really nails it. Right from the get-go, Far Cry 6 demonstrates some impressive lighting, with some great use of reflective surfaces along rain-soaked streets, mixed together with some subtle bloom and a colorful tone to really make the image pop. But when the sun comes up and the player is let loose on a tropical beach, the game's lighting really gets a chance to stretch its legs. The light design is incredible here, perfectly nailing that tropical atmosphere and delivering postcard-ready images no matter where you look. I especially love the way the world is soaked in orange light in the morning and evenings, reflecting off of the short palms and across the jungle canopies. Even nighttime sequences look impressive, with thick volumetric light pouring down from various bulbs and street lights, and glowing as the player passes by with some nice reflective properties along each weapon's metal finish. It might be a bit overblown at times, but that seems to suit Far Cry 6's visual art direction, and I think the end result is a pretty convincing image. That being said, I do feel the volumetric effects produced by the sun could be improved a little bit. Far Cry 5 does such a great job with its volumetric light, as it seems to wrap around trees in the early, foggy mornings. Far Cry 6 still technically does this, but it's a bit more subtle. And there's also this simplistic looking sun glare that keeps popping in and out as you pan the camera across the scene. Far Cry 6, when played on the PC, also benefits from some new ray tracing effects, including ray trace reflections that appear to be coupled with some screen space reflections to enhance the appearance of puddles and the surface of water. Personally, from what I've seen playing through this game on the PC for the past couple days, the ray tracing isn't really all that impressive. I think it looks best when looking at the metallic siding of an old 50s automobile, especially after a recent rainstorm but otherwise, players will probably not even notice a difference in most situations, and are better off saving performance and disabling the effect altogether. Now, let's take a quick look at some effects. Far Cry games have long featured a number of impressive effects, chief among them being the brilliant fire propagation mechanic that has thankfully been retained for well over a decade now. And Far Cry 6 once more sees this effect return, more or less the same. The flames have been altered slightly, giving them a more red hue, and the fire itself doesn't have that same disconnected appearance it had in Far Cry 5. However, I do feel that the fluid-looking flamethrower effect from 5 was a much more impressive effect than the triple-point flame emitted from this new custom-made flamethrower in 6. The water quality has also been mostly retained with 6, with a few minor improvements to the surface effects that we saw previously. Though I am a bit disappointed that the wave simulation hasn't really returned from Far Cry 3. Jumping around on waves and making sharp turns just isn't as enjoyable this time around, and would have been nice to see this improved upon with this latest game. The increase to particle density though is probably one of the biggest improvements in regards to the effects throughout this game. There's particles all over the place in Far Cry 6, with sparks flying out from Molotov explosions, grenades, and collisions left and right. And it all helps to enhance Far Cry's chaotic action. Finally, to wrap up the presentation side of things, I wanted to briefly talk about performance. This is an area that I think Far Cry 6 suffers the most in, at least when talking about the PC side of things. I've tested this game on several different configurations, all at various resolutions, and the performance just isn't what I want from this title. It's a visually impressive game without a doubt, and I can understand seeing this type of performance based on the pure density of each scene. However, something just seems off here. The performance regularly fluctuates between 80 and 50 at times, and there's a lot of stuttering that makes it feel really inconsistent. 
Sometimes it'll feel nice and smooth, but other times I feel like I had to go into the options menu and change some things around. But when you boot up the game on the PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, those platforms are achieving a buttery smooth 60 frames per second output, with what appears to be an upscaled 4K resolution at probably high graphic settings, without any of the inconsistent performance or frame pacing issues. Upon closer inspection, it seems that the general CPU and GPU utilization on the PC is just not where it should be right now. And considering how great Far Cry 5 runs, I'm hoping that the teams at Ubisoft will be able to find ways to improve the performance with a patch in the near future. Moving on, let's talk gameplay changes. Now, on the surface, not much has really changed. This game will feel very similar to Far Cry 5. The movement, the controls, the way you interact with objects, even the way enemies ragdoll. It's clear that this is still using the general backbone of what was established with Far Cry 5, and fans of that particular game should feel right at home. But that being said, there have been quite a few changes made to the general structure of the game, especially in how the player's inventory and user interface is handled. The weapon wheel, for example, has been hugely simplified. In Far Cry 5, you have access to four firearms, melee weapons, and all available throwables and gadgets. This includes grenades, molotovs, C4, knives, and variants of each of them. Additionally, players can flip to a second wheel set that has miscellaneous equipment like a fishing rod, a repair tool, and temporary buffs called homeopathics. All these items, both the gadgets and homeopathics, can be easily replenished by simply crafting straight from the weapon wheel. But in Far Cry 6, all of this is different. Players can still hold only four weapons at a time, but there's no melee weapon slot. In fact, all blunt weapons like baseball bats are gone, and are replaced with a classic machete from the past games. Additionally, players are limited to carrying only four different gadgets, which need to be selected ahead of time when customizing one of the player's new tools. The second wheel menu has also been replaced with a new quick chat menu instead, intended for cooperative play and things like the fishing rod and repair tool have been squeezed back onto the first wheel instead. Meanwhile, the homeopathic buffs have also been replaced with meals that, after crafting, will trigger automatically after performing a required action, in this case, sliding. Another big change to Far Cry 6 is how healing is handled. In Far Cry 5, players had two options when injured. They could wait for their health to replenish, or they could use acquired first aid kits to bandage themselves instantly. It was a simplified system from past Far Cry games, and due to popular demand, Far Cry 6 has returned to its roots slightly. Players now have three options for healing. They can wait or use an acquired first aid syringe just like in Far Cry 5, but they also can use a new instant heal option, where the player's character will try to fix the problem right away with a painful animation. The catch to this is that the quick heal does have a cooldown, meaning it can't be used all the time but it's still a nice option to have instead of having to waste resources with first aid kits. Far Cry 6 also sees a small change to its heads up display. In Far Cry 5, the radar and minimap were scrapped in order to improve the game's immersion. Replacing it was a top mounted compass with different icons appearing in the relative direction. But Far Cry 6 brings back the classic radar display, making it easier to see where enemies are at all times, assuming they've been tagged of course. Speaking of which, let's talk a little bit about the way enemies and the general combat is handled. Now, when you start off the game, the combat should already feel pretty similar to Far Cry 5. This game is built with a sort of semi-RPG design to it, so there are different leveled enemies that are more bullet resistant than others, purely based off of the difficulty level associated with them. But it's not quite as extreme as, say, Ghost Recon Breakpoint at launch or the more recent Assassin's Creed titles. That being said, Far Cry 6 does do something that I'm not a particular fan of, in that it basically requires certain ammo types for certain enemies. There are five essential ammo types in Far Cry 6, each designed for a specific type of enemy. Soft rounds, for example, are designed to kill unarmored soldiers and animals, while armor-piercing rounds are designed for armored enemies. Then there's impact rounds that can be used to punch through the windshields of vehicles like helicopters. And then there's poison and incendiary rounds that will counter inverse enemies. So poison rounds against a flamethrower can be used to detonate him, while incendiary rounds against a soldier spraying poison will set him on fire. It's an okay idea, and one that was technically part of Far Cry 5 as well, but Far Cry 6 goes all in on it. 
You can unload an entire magazine of soft rounds into an armored target's head before their helmet will pop off, and it just feels really gimmicky as a result. This only gets worse when dealing with higher level enemies, and because they deal increased damage, you're essentially locked out of certain areas until you level up. I think this design choice would have worked better in Far Cry 6 if they allowed players to swap out ammo types from the weapon wheel. For whatever reason, ammo types must be changed from designated weapon benches in the game world. So if you run out into the jungle with a bunch of weapons equipped with soft ammo rounds, you're completely screwed if you run into an armored soldier or a vehicle. What's even more annoying is that every gun starts off with these completely useless normal bullets that might as well just be plastic BBs, forcing you to modify the weapon with rare resources just to get bullets that deal practical levels of damage to enemies. As for the enemies themselves, they do have a few of their own new tricks up their sleeve. Like in Far Cry 5, enemies come in lots of different varieties. There's normal soldiers, snipers, shotgunners, pilots, and heavy gunners, the latter of which can now deploy special shields to help defend their position. Even more interesting though is that the enemies in Far Cry 6 won't necessarily attack you right away. The world is now split between open areas and restricted areas, meaning so long as the player avoids restricted areas and keeps their weapon holstered, they can travel across Yara freely without having to worry about a deadly confrontation. Though for players looking to stir up trouble, Far Cry 6's world still has plenty of options for chaos. There's of course military outposts to capture as always, with a set number of enemies that need to be killed in any way the player chooses. But there's also road checkpoints that are like mini outposts along most of the game's major roadways. There's also new anti-aircraft sites that must be destroyed to open up air travel within certain zones, and plenty of other random opportunities to help harass Anton's military might. But the military isn't the only thing that the player needs to look out for. Yara's jungles are rife with hostile wildlife that offer a stark contrast from the rather tame North American wildlife in Far Cry 5. Instead of things like bears and cows, Far Cry 6 sees the return of sharks, crocodiles, and leopards, among many other surprises hiding in the foliage. And for players looking for a break from it all, Far Cry 6 now features new hub areas called camps that centralize a lot of the structured activities featured in the game. Many of the main story missions, for example, will launch from one of these three camps, along with side missions, minigames, and various other activities. This is sort of an evolution of the home base system incorporated into Far Cry New Dawn, one of many features that Far Cry 6 seems to be building off of. Another big part of New Dawn that has returned here is a big emphasis on finding loot. In Far Cry 5, the only loot you needed to find are plants and some occasional resources to craft throwables on the go. Everything else in the game like weapons, attachments, vehicles, and clothing can be easily purchased using earned cash or using a pay-to-win style silver bar currency. But in the new Far Cry 6, you need loot for pretty much everything, and a lot of times you won't even know where to look to get the item that you want. Let's say you want an AK-47. You can technically save up in-game cash and buy it from one of the rare vendors assuming you're a high enough rank and they're offering that particular weapon but you're more than likely going to have to find one of the many military chests hidden in the world instead. These chests are found in pretty much every military location, like checkpoints and outposts, and will always give the player one of two things, a random weapon or gunpowder. If the player wants to modify a weapon they own, they'll need to use gunpowder for every attachment they want to unlock, along with some other more plentiful resources like metal fasteners. And considering each weapon has about 5 or 6 attachment slots, including the bullets I mentioned earlier, this turns the loot cycle into a very tedious grind. I have regularly found myself low on gunpowder when trying to customize my gear, and rather than tackling the outpost with the gear that I wanted to use, I was forced to use gear that I already upgraded out of necessity just to find the resources I needed to make an actual good weapon instead. Add on top of this the weirdly restrictive ammo customization, and the game design just feels like it's fighting you a lot early on. And that's just for the weapons. There's also a full loot cycle in place for other aspects of the game too. The new armor system, for example, that replaces the purely cosmetic clothing customization from Far Cry 5, is now hidden in several Libertad chests around the world as well, each offering players with different gear that will offer passive benefits. Like with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, all of these gear pieces can be transmogged to retain the benefits but swap the appearance, 
which is always a nice feature to include when introducing this type of system. For vehicles, players need to transport a discovered vehicle back to a vehicle recovery point, but those special vehicle customization options in Far Cry 6 are limited, as they can only be applied to four different ground vehicles, with only options to swap out the type of ammo being fired, the armor paneling, the cowcatcher, and a few other cosmetic options. It's certainly a step up from the vehicle customization in Far Cry 5, but I was still hoping there would be more freedom to modify the rest of the vehicles in the game, like boats, bikes, and aircraft. Far Cry 6 also introduces horses to the series, which is a very nice addition to the game's traversal due to their maneuverability, but it's odd that you can't call them to your position whenever you need, even though you do have the option to call your currently equipped custom car at any time. Far Cry 6 also hides away some of its best weapons and armor in unique chests as well. There's the crocodile chests that hide unique weapons, that not only look cool, but also have unique properties. Then there's smaller crocodile jewelry boxes, that contain things like special cosmetic charms to adorn your favorite weapons. There's also crypto chests that contain unique armor pieces with powerful passive abilities. And finally, there's uranium chests, found at any of the anti-aircraft sites, that give players the resources necessary to craft special resolver weapons like a minigun built out of old pipes and a motorcycle engine, or a CD launcher that plays the Macarena before shredding enemies with plastic shrapnel. Because of how important a role the loot plays in acquiring all of this highly sought after gear, you'll likely be spending a lot of time opening oil drums and grabbing random trash off of shelves. And I feel like in the future, the focus shouldn't be as much on looting as the actual action itself. On the bright side, Far Cry 6 does thankfully fix one of Far Cry 5's biggest problems, the story mission delivery. In Far Cry 5, the goal of the game was to eliminate elite members of a cult in each of Hope County's three regions, in order to draw out the head of the cult itself. But to do this, Far Cry 5 uses a tedious resistance point system. For every action that the player performs, they earn resistance points, and if they earn enough resistance points, then they unlock the next phase of the story and can face off immediately against one of the region's leaders. This gives Far Cry 5 a really disconnected feel, with a story that seems to be taking a backseat to the random open world activities. Far Cry 6 addresses this problem head on, and returns to the traditional design of offering a consistent story progression without any tedious requirements to complete side missions first. The game is still broken up into three main areas, each with their own leader or leaders to take down, but the side missions and activities are completely optional, and almost never required to progress the narrative. This was a much needed fix, so I'm glad that Ubisoft listened to the community on this one, and the result is a narrative that is much more enjoyable and interesting. Then of course, there's a bunch of other features that are completely unique to Far Cry 6 that I feel are worth mentioning. First, there's the Supremo backpacks. Like resolver weapons, the Supremo backpacks are constructed using uranium and other valuable resources found in the world. But unlike the game's many firearms and tools, each Supremo weapon is designed around a cooldown system making it a sort of get-out-of-jail-free card whenever a player desperately needs it. The first, and probably most useful Supremo backpack is easily the Rocket Barrage Exterminator, that launches a volley of heat-seeking missiles at any targets on screen. This includes infantry, cars, trucks, tanks, and most especially helicopters. And considering how hard the helicopters are to take down with normal weapons, this Supremo is almost a must to survive early on in the game. Other options include an EMP-bursting Volta that creates an electric AoE to disable vehicles and gadgets nearby. The Furioso is similar, only instead of electricity it emits a ring of fire. And then there's more cooperative-based Supremos like the Medico that can self-revive and heal nearby players within range. To prevent all of these from feeling overpowered, they do require a brief cooldown before being available again but this can be sped up by performing combo kills, greatly encouraging a much more aggressive and chaotic approach. What's odd about the Supremos though is that they also serve as the sole way to customize what throwable items you'll be able to bring with you on the field. Another interesting change here is the way the perk system is handled. In Far Cry 5, players have a full menu tab dedicated to various player abilities called perks. These can be unlocked by spending perk points, that can be unlocked by completing challenges under the challenge tab. 
In Far Cry 6, the entire perk tree is scrapped, with most abilities either being available by default or locked behind the new Camp Construction Desk system. Within each camp, players can use resources like gasoline and medicine to craft structures, each offering upgrades that will grant players with additional resource gain opportunities and occasional player abilities. La Cantina, for example, unlocks the ability for players to craft food recipes, similar to the homeopathics from before, and further upgrades to this kitchen will unlock more recipes that can be in turn unlocked using animal skins. It all just seems overly tedious and convoluted, and having player abilities tied to it, like being able to use a wingsuit, feels weirdly hidden and easy to miss. Another change has been made to the Guns for Hire system. In Far Cry 5, players can recruit a number of characters to fight alongside them in a war against Joseph Seed. There's six main human allies, each with their own special abilities like being able to conduct a bombing raid with their plane. There's three slots for more generic NPCs, who can accompany the player in more head-on combat situations. And then there's the three animal buddies that really steal the show, especially the lovable Boomer, who can be directed to attack enemies and even grab their loot if necessary. In Far Cry 6, most of the guns for hire systems have been scrapped. There's no human allies that can be called upon anymore outside of an actual online player in co-op. But thankfully, the animal buddies have been retained, as they were most likely one of Far Cry 5's most popular new features. And to try to one-up it, Far Cry 6 introduces an even more adorable dachshund puppy named Chorizo, whose tiny wheelchair won't keep him from latching onto enemies and causing the perfect distraction. There's also Guapo, a vicious crocodile, and Chicharon, a rooster built for speedy attacks to drive enemies from cover. There's also a few other fun animal buddies to discover, but I'll keep those a surprise. Now, 6 does not feature the arcade mode from Far Cry 5, so there's no custom maps or anything like that. But it does retain Far Cry New Dawn's expedition bonus missions in a new mode called Special Operations. In these co-op tailored missions, players are tasked with finding a deadly bomb in a large, sprawling environment, and need to deliver it back to a rendezvous point. The catch is that the bomb is sensitive to heat, and needs to be consistently cooled down by staying in shadows or dunking it in water. This makes for an interesting dynamic where players need to carefully plan their next move or risk exploding out in the middle of a field, all while dealing with increasingly challenging groups of enemies as they reach the extraction zone. Currently, there's only two of these missions available to play, but there appears to be at least four more planned, and from what I've played, it's a fun side activity to try out. Though I would like to see more variety and not just have to do the same bomb extraction gimmick over and over again. Lastly, there's the Lost Bandito system. This is not particularly that interesting to me, but some players may appreciate it. Essentially, this is a built-in metagame where players can assign leaders and recruits to go on missions to acquire resources. After the deployment time is complete, the player can then essentially choose that team's adventure, with different outcomes depending on the available recruits and resources at the player's disposal, with higher risk choices offering more valuable rewards. The problem with the system is that it seems almost too slow in helping to acquire specific weapon rewards. Because of this, I'd recommend only using this to acquire some extra in-game cash, as that seems to always be a useful commodity. Finally, let's wrap up with a brief sound comparison. Which game do you feel has the superior audio quality and design?
And that wraps up this episode of Direct Comparison. As you've probably already noticed, there was a lot to go over with this one. Far Cry in particular is a series I've always been very interested in. I love its open-ended nature, its immersive mechanics, and its beautiful locales. And Far Cry 6, despite many of the problems that I've brought up today, is probably one of the best Far Cry games I've played in years. Ubisoft has fixed a lot of the problems I personally had with Far Cry 5, chief among them being the annoying story structure, and the mostly stale presentation. Far Cry 6 looks incredible by comparison in pretty much every single area. I was blown away when I booted this up on my PlayStation 5 and similarly the Xbox Series X, as it plays so incredibly smooth and looks great. However, the PC version definitely could use some further attention, as I ran into a number of technical issues. From weird glitchy eyes, to lighting not rendering properly with the ray tracing enabled, to the lackluster performance that doesn't seem to be taking full advantage of my hardware. Because of that, I think for the time being, I'd recommend sticking to the next-gen console versions, assuming you have that option. If you really want to play on PC, you can lower the water and shadow settings to medium, and use AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which should give you some better average performance numbers. But even after doing that, I still ran into a few frame pacing issues. As for the changes to the gameplay, I think Far Cry 6 really benefited from its more interesting game world and its many new gameplay features. Having the cockfight minigame designed to mimic a fighter video game is one of the many creative and fun ideas that helps to make Far Cry 6 so enjoyable. And there's plenty of examples of this crazy content all throughout the game that takes full advantage of what this series does best. But core gameplay elements like the unnecessary emphasis on looting, the weirdly restrictive weapon attachments and bullet types, and the vehicles that still feel overly simple to the point where they aren't comfortable to fly or drive around in, are areas that I'd like to see Ubisoft address in the future, either with a big update, or at least for any future titles to this franchise. But a lot of my issues are purely preference-based. I'm curious what you guys think. What do you guys think of the changes that Ubisoft made with Far Cry 6? And what do you think of its presentation? Let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this posted every week.